Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, no matter where you are, no matter what time of day it is, I want to thank you for choosing today's free training as part of your uh, continuing education lineup. Uh, today's free training is provided through the Missouri Professional Training Partnership. You can learn all about the partnership at moapco.org forward slash training. And you can see everything that we've got for a continuing education recorded training at our training catalog. Uh, mopartnership.glide.page Speaking of our training catalog, uh, that's where you'll need to sign in to today's session. So when you get to the page up on the top right, you will see an option to sign in or sign up. Um, if you've not already created an account, please do so using the sign up uh, field. You will be prompted to um, answer several questions and that is what you'll use to uh, actually that's what we use to pull information on uh, your certificates if you want to know about the profile creation uh, you can watch this uh, May 2024 update that is on the main screen if not go ahead and click on sign in put your email address in that you've already created a profile with and uh, it should sign you up Okay, so now that we're signed in, um, you will go to sessions, find your session that you are looking for uh, that you want to sign into, and then after you watch the video, you will click this affidavit of training. Make sure that all the information over on the right side is correct, click I attest, and then click submit. And then uh, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday of each week, you should receive a copy of your certificate. Thank you for choosing the Missouri Professional Training Partnership. When I say peer support, what is, some, what is something that you think about? What is the first thing that pops in your mind? It doesn't matter, good, bad, ugly, just say it. Talking. Huh? Talking. Talking to someone. Anybody else? Support, support system. A listening ear so I've done this before and I've had people say gossip and a forced in issue like you're forced to do it it's not a, a voluntarily thing so um, <clears throat> with that said we're gonna go into peer support today a little bit talk about the different personalities in the centers um, and the different personalities within ourselves so like I said, my name is Angie Rogers. I am the Executive Director for the Scott County 911 Emergency Communications Board. I'm extremely new to peer support. I went through the Warriors Rest Foundation Peer Support Certification, and I am peer support certified. I serve on a team in the Boot Hill. Um, I've been in public safety for 20 years. I started as a frontline communicator. So if I've been in public safety for 20 years, 20 years ago, what was peer support like? It didn't exist. You, you dealt with the call, you put your head down, and you answered the next call. What were we trained to do? We were trained to not let it show. We were trained to, if you showed it, that was a weakness, and you couldn't do your job, and it was time for you to move on. So we, Shelly and I were talking last night about different calls that we didn't get the peer support on that we should have. So everybody has those type of calls and I'm sure when I say that, that call flashes in your head because that's something that we didn't do for so long. We didn't sit after the call and, and gossip and talk, or not even gossip, just talk about the incident and how it affected us or that we were still dealing with it. So, like I said, I've been in peer support, I'm new to it. Prior to when I started in this class, when I, when I started it, doing my peer support class, I, uh, I first day I, I text my group and I said, I don't wanna do this. This is stupid. I'm not going to sit here and talk about mushy, gushy feelings with a bunch of people that I see as strong and now I'm getting to see them as weak. Because in my mind, that's where I had been. So I went back the next day, 
one of the main questions the instructor asked me is, what kind of calls affect you? And to this day, my answer hasn't changed the first part of it, but as we all know, child calls are horrible. We all hate the child caller calls, not callers necessarily, but the calls involving children. So I didn't, I felt like that was the generic answer. But in my experience, calls didn't bother me. I could take them, I could go to the class, I could go to the next step and we were done. We finished that call out, went to the next one. I also worked in a police department for the majority of my career. So the difference in that is I saw the call from beginning to end. We are right now in the middle of consolidation and putting, putting you all in buildings that are just yours. So do your firefighters come and tell you the end of the call? Do you know what happens on the end of your EMT calls? Do you know what happens on the end of your police calls? I didn't realize that I was getting peer support from my peers because they were my friends. I'm engaged. It says I have one fiance, which my daughter cracked up when she proofread this. She said, how many are you supposed to have? <laughs> um, <laughs> he, calls, he calls me his ex-girlfriend. He said, well, when you become my, your, my fiance, you're my ex-girlfriend now. So if you ever meet him, he, he calls me his ex-girlfriend. He's in public safety. He is a detective. He's a narcotics detective. He's seen it all, done it all. He's a very hard, is not a peer support lover. When I told him I was coming to teach, he said, huh, good luck with that. But he supports me because he knows that me helping others has helped me. So we'll get into that too. Um, I do have two kids, the two in the upper corner. The other one is my niece that I lives with me when she's not traveling abroad in Honduras, where she's at currently, doing missions. I have two bio bigs that I call them. My daughter is a, a sophomore at SLU. She's going to be an athletic trainer. She wanted as far away from public safety as possible. My son is a full-time fire and will be joining the police academy within the next few years, but full-time in our hometown where I, he was born and raised. <clears throat> I have two fur pups. Bruno's kind of hiding in the background there, and they are my babies. So if you have me on Facebook, you see more pictures of my dogs than you see of my kids. Um, I, like I said, I wasn't 100% on board. I didn't want to go back. What do you mean what calls bother me? They don't. She said, are you okay? Yeah. And I said, yeah, I'm fine. And if you know Ryan Dedman, you know I'm fine is normally a bad thing. But I was, I thought. And I technically am. Um, so I went back the next day, started in on the hard stuff, really got in depth and realized that I'm okay as long as I'm in control. If I handle the call, I know it's handled to the best of my ability and nobody else is in charge of it. It's my call. I handled it. Well, in this great new career, because I'm not frontline all the time anymore, I don't get that. I don't get to benefit from that. I don't just handle my calls. I deal with every call in our whole county. I'm over three PSAPs and two dispatch centers. I go through all of their calls weekly. That's, my, that's what I do. I hit, I hit every one. I QA the hard ones. I go to them and talk to them and ask them why. Why did it take this long? Why did you ask this? Because they probably have a valid reason. And I want to know that. So I'm not in control of those. So what makes me mad? When I have to QA them and I know, I know what should have been done. I'm the back seat, person in the back seat telling you how to drive. <clears throat> I don't like it, but that's, that's what I do. So we have some objectives that we have to hit, but um, we're going to identify different personalities in the comm center, learn the definition of peer support and how it can help, how to help and not hurt. That's important. Because I don't want you helping someone and it hurting you. And I don't want them helping you and hurting them. So whatever that looks like. We don't want to hurt them by trying to help them. And we don't want to hurt you by trying to help them. 
and different steps after a critical incident. So the idea is simple. Peer support is simple. Peers helping peers. We help each other, we listen, we empathize, and because they're working those large incidents, those big scale incidents. We understand better than most because we've experienced the same issues or similar calls. So what can you, I mean, it, who's gonna understand you better than me? Who's gonna understand me better than you? But what happens when those who help others need help? What, what happens then? What happens when we're the ones that are on this side of burnout? Or on this side of, I don't think there's anything wrong, and then you go sit in a class and you realize, it's not that it's wrong, I'm just to that point. So that's what I realized that day, well that week. So, and what happens, do you know the person in your shift? We all go in, we have our iPads, we have our phones, whatever's allowed in your center. I always, I mean, when I was frontline 24 seven, I knew the person sitting beside me because we didn't have all of that. It was me and her. So I knew her, I knew her family. I grew up down the road from her. To this day, we still work together, so, because I am a little messed up in the head, and I, and I go back and help at my old center. I'm part-time at two centers, and why not? Because that's my call. Um, so I do get to work with her some, but you need to know them. Do you know what it looks like when something's wrong? Or do you know, just know what it looks like because they're playing their uh, TV show on Netflix too loud and it's aggravating you? Or they're constantly having to step out to take personal phone calls? Do you know if something's wrong? And do you know what their personalities look like? So, so the purpose of this session is to explore the different personalities in the center within ourselves and within ourselves. I am first one to tell you I have multiple personalities within about a minute most times. <laughs> yeah, they, I mean, as long as I, I allow that to happen. What happens when we remove the stigma from peer support and mental health and help those who help others? Who do we turn to when we need help and how does that support work? What's the one thing you don't like to walk into? Something you know nothing about. So after a large critical incident, here I come stomping in to Highway Patrol and I'm gonna say, come on, we're gonna go talk. And you're like, shit, what did I do? I don't want you to have that, because I've been there. I've been the one that's like, I'm not going to talk to them. Why would I go to that? All they're gonna do is yell at me because I didn't handle it the way they wanted me to. So I don't want you to be surprised when that peer support happens. So we're gonna look at the different steps of peer support. And personalities can vary not only person to person, but day by day, hour by hour, minute by minute. So that's my team. That's, that's within my brain every day, as you can tell. Uh, I absolutely, 100%, can say every, all five of those are in me right now. And or, or you all struggle with them as well. Maybe not struggle, maybe sadness a little bit, <laughs> anger, but um, they're there to balance us out as well. So that's the team we're gonna explore kind of at the beginning. And remember, I'll bring that up later. So just some overview of the personalities within yourself and within your center. So disgust, my little green friend. These sit on my desk every day at work. I look at them and I giggle because when I look at her, I think of certain people. <laughs> <laughs> or I think of myself when mushrooms are put in front of me or fish, shrimp, anything like that. But when I held this up, did someone pop in your head? In your center, in your life? Did someone say, oh, that's them? But when is it you? I wouldn't say when, I think. Yeah, absolutely. When is it you? 
you're disgusted, you're wore out, you're burnt out. I sat in a comm center 24 seven, well, it felt like 24 seven, but I sat in a comm center for over 15 years. Even after I became a director, I was a working director. So when I was over the sheriff's office, or when I was over the sheriff's office, I was also working positions. I was also the only trainer. So I was doing everything. This was me, a lot. Did I know this was me? No, that wasn't me. I'm good, I'm not burnt out. I sit on two boards, I'm over the, I work the conference. I'm the smiley face you see at registration. This isn't me. This was me. This is still me. I'm not saying it's not. It's there. She sits there. So the definition of disgust is strong emotional reaction characterized by feeling of revulsion or profound disapproval. I have that same look most of the time. That's probably why green is not my favorite color. <laughs> so, so when we talk about disgust, sorry, how many, what kind of personality traits do you see in your center that disgust would, or what, what happens when disgust comes out in the comm center? Do people get snippy? They're aggravated, their nose snarls up. Huh? uncomfortable because you, you're kind of walking on those eggshells you don't want to you don't want to agitate that bear so what do we do to help them does anybody know how do we help those and I hate to say but how do we help those disgusting people <laughs> or those disgusting at times it's uh, what oh <laughs> um, how, what do we do because they're constantly in disapproval I've worked in a few centers and we all know those ones that no matter if I brought, bought them the best, brightest chair and it did everything, they'd find a reason to complain about it. And how many times do those people that deal with the disgust and you're dealing with that day in and day out, there's one an underlining reason. We're not looking at that because it doesn't matter to me. I have to go sit with her for 12 hours. I ain't going home with her. But we are, because we spend more time with the people in our centers than we do in our houses. Dig in, what is wrong? I'm just tired of this place, it's not gonna change. Why are we even doing this? We're currently going through some con consolidation possibilities, so this face is a lot of what I see when I walk into centers. They walk, I walk in and they see change, they see me saying, we're gonna go do prepared live and I'm excited because we're gonna do video and they're like, it's one more thing. One more thing in an already busy day that I have to do. What can you do to make my life easier? So we have this, we deal with it. In peer support, how we deal with it. We're sitting around our circle, we're talking and the disgust comes out and it it just feeds the whole group because when one person is that mad and that agitated it feeds everybody so our next little guy is fear the unpleasant emotion caused by belief that someone or something is dangerous likely to cause pain or a threat so <laughs> am I fearful that I'm gonna lose my job Am I fearful that I'm not going to be able to save the next caller? Am I fearful that the next call is going to be that suicide that I already took yesterday and I don't know if I can do it again? Am I fearful because I live in a small town and every time I pick up the phone, it's someone that I know? 911, where is your emergency? Hey, Angie. It's happened more than I care, I care to tell. What are you fearful about in your center? What are your people in your centers fearful about? Change. change, absolutely. I'm sure you all are going through tons of change right now, building, and why can't we just leave it the way it was? It's always worked. I mean, I know we all joke, you know, you're not fe fearful you're gonna lose your job because who else is gonna sit in my seat and do it? But do we say that out of a fear that someone could come in and do it better? 
fear of being replaced, feel of someone fi finding some, them finding someone to do it better than you. <coughs> we all deal with this. So how do, we, how do we deal with fear and peer support? What does that look like? We get it a lot. We get those, these little guys that come in, little girls that come in and look like this and they get startled easy and they have PTSD and trauma in their life that maybe didn't come from, from what they dealt with in the last eight hour shift or 12 or 16 or 24 hour shift. It dealt with what their, <laughs> what their dad did six years ago, how their mom handled something and made them fearful of rejection. We're fearful for a reason, but is it because of what we've dealt with recently or is it also a past experience that makes us have that? Well, let's try it again. So tell me, fear protects us. It protects us from the things that we don't. You have my mouse. That's how you're doing it. Um, <laughs> so fear protects us. It makes us say, can, I'm scared to death. I do not want to go in those little things that like strap you down when you go on vacation and they shoot you in the air. That ain't for me. Last night, didn't even tell Shelby. I was for sure I was not going to wake up this morning. I was going to die in my sleep. Why? Well, I don't know. I had it all made up in my head. My heart was racing. I didn't even tell her. We're sleeping like three feet apart. Didn't even tell her. I was like, well, if I don't wake up, Shelby will be the first to know. Uh, <laughs> I have the, we have those irrational fears. You have the fears in your dreams that you don't even realize that you're afraid of happening. We have to address those. How do you address? I have fears still from high school that I'm late for school. I still have those dreams. I don't worry about being late for classes. Maybe I should worry about that. I don't know. <laughs> I needed Starbucks, but um, make sure you're facing that. Talk to someone. We'll talk about that. Joy. How, well, before, how many people thought of somebody or yourself? Or you thought of what you're feel for, fearful of? Because I, that's, he sits right in the middle of me, my, right in the middle of my computer. If you ever see me send this picture of my computer screen, he's right there. So joy, that little optimistic fool in your center that every day's a great day. <laughs> and you're like, <laughs> I'm gonna, sh it's gonna be a great day. And you just wait. Uh, Oh my gosh, what are you doing? How are you? I just love you. It's probably me in conference, just so you know. Um, <laughs> it's so good to see you. I'm so glad you're here. Oh, that caller, they were just so nice and sweet. And you're like, man, that bitch calls all the time. <laughs> so they're profound and endearing, feeling of happiness, pleasure, content associate with positive experience and outcomes. I see this little heifer and I don't have f positive experience and outcomes. She makes me angry sometimes because she's so optimistic, but I know I need her in my life. I need this person. I need this emotion. So who did, when I'm going through and stomp my feet and talking all joyful and happy and singing the praises, did y'all think of somebody? Was it you? <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> you go through these that it, still it, my little joy's broke but she sits right here I think I was mad when I was trying to get her out of the package and her feet ripped out of her stand uh, so just that joyful person that comes behind your disgust and says cheer up buddy cheer up hey what are you doing hey do you want some of this oh you should we're going to do this today and it's going to be great and we're going to go through this and you're like 12 hours. Just breathe. Just breathe. So we deal with that. And then the little joy girl and her fa friend fear. And you know fear's like, why do you keep screaming? Every time you scream, I jump out of my skin. Uh, it's, it, you just go through them. And poor little joy doesn't even under, know that she's driving you crazy because she thinks she's making, she, even if she does know she's driving you crazy or he, she, they're going to do it anyway because that's them. That's how they cope. That's how they get through. 
how do I deal with this little joy, not yet, how do we deal with this little joy character in peer support? Uh, strangle her, <laughs> put her in the corner. Uh, no. You see this little joy person say, I need help. I'm, what, what are my, cope, what, what are they saying to make you realize that something's not right? How do you, how do you identify Joy's issues that you can help with? Because she's always bouncy and excited and bubbly. Go ahead. So with Joy comes these little core bubbles. And if you've watched Inside Out at all, you know about core memories. And Joy goes around protecting all her yellow little core memories because she doesn't want them to ever be sad. But who we talk about next? Did you mess it up? Can't have nothing nice around here. Who we talk about next comes in and it's sadness. And she starts touching all of Joy's memories, all her joyful times and making her sad, making those times sad. And you think while you're watching the movie, why do we need this? Why do I need sadness? I don't need that, throw her out. Like throughout the whole movie, I'm like, gag her, bound her, make Riley happy again. Like, <laughs> it's probably what shirt I need to say, make Riley happy again. Uh, but sadness is defined as emotional pain associated with or characterized by feelings of disadvantage Loss, despair, grief, helplessness, disappointment, and sorrow. So here's sadness, eeyore it in, moping it in. I always tell people, I'll be like, you just, you kind of look like Eeyore today. What's wrong? You're never like this. What, why are you Eeyore? So it's my little sadness girl. It's okay to be this. My friend Tracy Eldridge tells me religiously, it's okay to be sad, you can't stay there. So it's okay to be sad about grief. It's okay to have your joy bubble turn blue because you missed something or someone or uh, and at whatever it was in the past. That's fine, you can miss that. Don't stay there, find your resources, let us help. Sadness, what does sadness look like in your centers? Let me answer the phone. I'm just not going to do it right. They run stuff faster than me because I'm a, I want to run everything the fastest. I want to get the J1 back fast. I want to be able to find the person that nobody else can find. But what happens when that person comes in, sits next to me, and they're better at it than I am? I can just picture her. Picture me because it's me. She's in my head too. So in peer support, how do we deal with sadness? We acknowledge it. It's okay to be sad. It's okay, we'll sit, I'll sit with you. I'll sit with you when you're sad, Lori. I'm here, it's what I do. Because I, and this is something I'll talk about, like I told you, I haven't had an incident in my professional life that I felt like I needed peer support for. I've, I've attended them. But what has helped me in peer support is helping you. So that's a totally different aspect of peer support. I do it, everybody's like, you gotta watch it. The weight of other people's issues are gonna weigh on you. But if I can take that from you, and it doesn't bother me, because I can go to sleep at night. I sleep normally just fine with a dog curled up somewhere around my body burning me up and if I can take that from you and help you then I get this and when sadness means joy joy's chasing her around don't touch him don't touch my bubbles but then joy realizes that Riley needs that we need that in our life we need that sadness and then fear meets sadness and <laughs> chaos and then disgust meets sadness and he just, she just makes, they just make each other mad. But sadness doesn't know why, why disgust hates him because sadness just, well, okay, that's how it'll be. Why can't we just not have her? I tell people, 
<laughs> I, I say this, and if you've ever sat with me for any amount of time at all, you've heard me say it. I take medicine not to feel sad. I take medicine so I don't have emotions. I take medicine so I don't cry. Does it help? Probably, because I'd be curled up in this corner and I'd never have got up in front of you. Because I have anxiety extremely bad. To the point that it's debilitating at times that I won't go. Um, but I come because I want to help. I don't want to hurt. And I don't want to hurt trying to help, but I want to be here. Our next little friend, if you've ever met my fiance, he looks a lot like this, except he's bearded. Um, <laughs> it is anger, a strong feeling of being upset or annoyed because of something wrong or bad. He's my, he sits right next to fear most of the time in my desk. I tend to move him around, but I share a uh, office with a bunch of little kids, AKA detectives, <laughs> and they come in and play with them as well. So I have, I've made my office the peer support kind of office where there's squishies and kinetic sand and Play-Doh, and when they've had a bad shift, there's snacks. I'm, my office is normally where they end up. <coughs> but anger, we see this a lot in our peer support. We see this a lot in our centers. Like I said, you thought of somebody, maybe your chief, that angry little person that stomps his foot. We have a captain that he's not angry like this, but it's funny when he gets thinking about something and he wears cowboy boots and he taps his foot. I have to think about tapping my foot, so I don't know how he stays angry and taps his foot, but I always laugh and I'll say, he was tapping his foot again. And they're like, he was thinking about something. Um, but this little guy or girl, we have them in our centers. We have them in our lives. I don't hide that this is my mother. <laughs> <laughs> She's just an angry little fella. I would say it if she was sitting here, that's not anything I hide from her. Um, so we have this and we try to combat it. And when we're sitting in peer support and your angry person walks in and I don't know why I'm here. Why did I have to come to this? And you're like, I'm just here to facilitate. It's just my job. Like, and they sit down in that chair, arms crossed, mad. And you're like, he'll be, he'll be sadness before he leaves because he's being tough. He's mad about something because he didn't understand why the call turned out the way it did. He doesn't understand why we're going to sit here and talk about the touchy-feely stuff that may not matter to him. What does that look like? How do you get through this? We, we talk around him, around her. They come in, they're mad. Well, I have to listen, but I don't have to talk. No, you're right. You don't have to talk. I'm not going to make you talk. But undoubtedly, you're going to probably listen. So here he is listening and We'll go into peer support, but we're going through and I, how we kind of run peer support in our group is we start at the beginning and we work through the incident. So who's at the very beginning of the call? The little baby dispatcher <laughs> that answered the call. And she's like, yeah, I answered 911 and, and then snips. Well, if you'd have just paged us sooner, if you'd have double toned so I could have ran code, why didn't you ask these questions? And it's a lot of finger pointing. And if you get that with all of them, maybe not fear because they're fearful, but this is a lot of what you see when you walk into peer support. This is a lot what sits in our circle when it's that hard call. And then she starts discussing the call or we play the call if it's not going to hurt them. And we let them listen. We had a fire call, fatality fire call. And they were listening. They heard the page. They knew that they got there as soon as they could, but what they didn't know was that by the time someone called 911, the house was fully engulfed. So we had watched it on a ring cam grow, blow up, like that's how far it went. So they were all walking in, all these mad little firefighters, stomping in in their firefighter boots. I made them get out of bed and come talk to me. Yeah, I didn't bring them any food. I have a firefighter in my family. I'm, I, I can talk about how they like to eat and sleep <laughs> yeah, and watch TV. And he, they all come walking in, 
and the lieutenant and I, fire lieutenant and I had already talked. And I had our pastor that's there with us because he, he brings that morta mortality to it. He can make you understand that part of it maybe a little bit more. And he says, it's okay. Watch this. And we turn it on for them, and they're watching, and you see it kind of melt because they were holding everything in, and they felt responsible. Two people passed in that fire. And they, they, she was almost up the stairs. She could have gotten out. Well, she couldn't have. They couldn't understand that where the fire burn was, you know, it was, we went back into that. We, and that we looked at all of it because going deeper into the call helped them. It didn't hurt them. I went into the dispatch center and talked to the dispatcher. You can come to this if you feel like you need to. That's the first thing I do. That's my job. I walk into the center. We've had an officer involved shooting. It was my birthday. I had just got through peace, uh, uh, peer sport training. Literally, Friday, Thursday. This was Friday. I was sitting at Mexican. My fiance's phone goes off and he says, we've had an officer involved shooting. And I said, okay, do we get to finish eating? <laughs> we didn't. Um, I get up to dispatch. This is a girl that has dealt with all of our, all of our big incidents. First time she's ever been walked up to and said, I'm just gonna sit here. You don't have to talk to me, but if you want something to eat, you want something to drink, you want to take your headset off and walk away, I'm here. It doesn't matter what that looks like. You tell me what you need. So I sat down and we sat there and there was another dispatcher there, a newer one, and we talked. And she told me about the call, how it came in, what happened. I said, okay. So I'm getting messages and texts and I'm talking to her and I'm like, well, we're going to go do a we're going to go talk downstairs for a little bit. And I asked the dispatcher, you got this? He was like, yeah, I'm good. Because everybody else was off the street anyway by that time. And she was mad. I don't know that she was as mad as the officer involved, but she was mad because she couldn't stop it. That was her job was to stop it. So they start talking and the girl tells them how the call came in. Kind of like um, Angie, An Light Angie. She's Light Angie. I'm Dark Angie. Um, like we talked about, like she talked about dispatch priming. Does he have a weapon? He did. He splashed in it around. He had a gun. And then how it all happened, I went downstairs and got the, the um, witnesses in and brought them something to eat and things like that. But so I got to hear, then I got to kind of play out their side. So I got to not only be there for my dispatcher, I got to be there for my for the witnesses and officers as well. But I take her downstairs and she kind what do you mean we have to go downstairs? Like the disgust comes out in her. Am I in trouble? Why would I be in trouble? I followed protocol. Well, anger comes out in her. She's a redhead anyway, so. And if you know me, you know I have a thing for redheads. <laughs> so it's just how it is. But, so go ahead with anger, Zach. I want to beat it. <laughs> so we all have these. We all have all these emotions. Were there any that you, obviously you all thought of someone when we talked about these because everybody's face kind of, <laughs> that's who it is. Um, how many did you identify with? All of them, right? So we, we have some of the biggest personalities in comm centers. We don't have the, I, I did bring a library into a comm center. She is okay. She still works there. And I laugh and I say, if I could train a librarian to be, get loud and do this job, I'm good. Well, she's, she's there. She's good. But how, do you, how many of these do you experience in one shift? All of them. Absolutely. So then we, I don't have this little guy's video because he's not really, he's like an underlining character, but this is your imagination. Our little elephant guy. So he's our imagination. 
So when your imagination goes with fear, it just increases. So he's like your little tan intensifier, is what I think of when I think of imagination. He just kind of intensifies it. Well, what if this happens? Well, what if this happens? He's our what if. He can make things real fun, and he can make things worse. So remember to curb your imagination, too. Last night, my imagination <laughs> was running wild in my bed. I was going to die. I have an ear infection. I always do. That's nothing new. I, it's going to take over my entire body, and I'm going to die. That was my brain going to bed last night. It's my brain most of the time <laughs> of different things. Um, but you have to be able to check that and say, is this a rational imagination that I'm having? So we're going to get in this and peer support. I want you to understand what you're walking into. How much time do I have? 25 minutes? 10 minutes? Okay. So we're going to go through some peer support really fast. <laughs> um, peer support comes in different types, different groups, and it... Um, you're going to see different types of it. I went through peer support with um, Warriors Rest, so they may do things a little bit different, but we get these lovely cards. So if I'm ever called into your center for peer support, most likely this is all I'm going to have in my hand because it's just my guide to see what, how I can help you. So most of the time these are not in order, but what's not up there is the rest, part of it when you come in from a bad incident and I say cool down because I feel like the worst of worst incidents either happen when it's super super cold outside and we can't breathe because it's so cold or it's so hot that we're melting so they come in cool down warm up one of the first things that we're taught to do is we're going to give you water because your emotions are up here your anxiety everything it's up here your adrenaline and if you've ever watched an adrenaline dump or you've been part of it, drink water. I'm going to give you, I want you to sit down. I want you to rest. Take in some water. I'm going to have some food there. <coughs> and then the initial thing that we're going to do, if it's to the point that we need to update you on someone's condition or things like that, you're going to have the crisis management briefing, which is the CMB. And it's going to be to you're going to be in a place like this and we're going to tell you so-and-so's at the hospital or they've been released home or whatever that looks like. We want to keep you updated because who can stop the rumors? We can, but we have to be able to give you the information. The rumors within the departments, the rumors out in Wonderland, whatever that looks like. So it's not, it's going to describe what happened, what caused it, the effects, and we're going to indicate what needs to be done. So, but we're going to have something after this. So that may involve, that's going to be a big group. So then we're going to go into the diffusing. Diffusing is what I, what I like to see happen before you go off of a shift. This is where you get everybody together and you talk about the event. You're not going into deep in depth. You're acknowledging it. You're introducing the team because when I walk in, I walk in with people. I'm not just going to come to a group and talk to you one-on-one -on -one unless it's an individual class. So I, I'm going to talk, I, I'm going to introduce you to my team. You may know me, you may not know me, so they may introduce me. We're going to describe the progress. I'm stressing confidentiality to you because the one thing in our RSMOs about peer support I can never testify against you. It is all strictly confidential. I can, I'm, it's not going back to your city manager. It's not going back to your director. What you and I talk about stays between you and I or this group. <coughs> and we stress that. It doesn't leave here. Assess if, if, if we need more help. We want to get you to where you can relax enough that maybe you can go home and get some rest. So we've done these a lot. This is what I took my dispatcher downstairs for. And she said, I've never done this before. And she was kind of scared. And I said, 
well, neither have I, because it was my first. <laughs> I have role played it, but I've never actually done this, so we're going to see what it's about. <coughs> so then we're going to go into the CISD phase, which is more of the debriefing. It's after the event, after you go home, you're meeting with the group again, check, it, check in and process some more emotions. Participation and discussion should be voluntary. But I've also been told that every part of it should be voluntary. For certain calls, we do not voluntarily in our department, it's not a voluntary. You have to come again, but you don't have to talk. So you have to come listen, and then you get the angry little guy in here that says, I'm not going to sit here. I'm not, I'll, I'll sit here because they're making me, but I ain't talking. And then he, he turns into this because somebody said something and it hit and he didn't realize or he turns into anger, he stays angry, and we have to say, hey, we're not, like, that's not what we're here for. If we want to discuss those emotions, let's step over here so you're not affecting the whole group. <coughs> so again, we're setting expectation. Again, I'm stressing confidentiality. So this is what it's going to look like when someone walks into your center. I want you to not be surprised. We're going to have the fact phase, tell me who you are, how you were related to the incident. How This is a completely, um, this isn't for outsiders, this is inside your department or inside those that responded. As you think about this incident, what, what's prominent to you as a dispatcher? Their voice on the phone. Well, maybe this is the first time you've seen the video because we're just now implementing video in our centers. And they, they put the video, you, the, the, your suspect or your victim, you got to watch the video. How's that feel? What's the worst part of the incident for you? Because what's the worst part of the incident for you is not going to be what probably what's the worst part for me. The symptom phases, what does that look like? And we're building with each step. So we're very much, CMV, you're, it's very passive. And then diffusing amps up a little bit, debriefing amps up a little bit more. And then as an individual, my team lead or me as a team lead is going to say, hey, I need you to reach out to so-and-so. You seem to connect with them. Are you good with that? And then I'm going to reach out on the individual level. Or they're going to reach out. On, we're going to keep reaching out to those people. So that's a trained peer support for professional to check in anytime after the event. If at any time you say to me, hey, Angie, I feel like I, it's something above me because I am not a therapist. That would be scary. <laughs> I am not a counselor, um, I can, but I, I have one on my team. I have a trauma-informed counselor on my team. They can do EMR. She does everything. We have a trauma-informed counselor. So that is somewhere that I can take you to. And then once your care is above what I can do as peer support, I'll still check in on you, but we're done with that, me trying to facilitate that. I need to pass you on to someone that has higher support. <coughs> so just to kind of run through, I'll, I'll do it fast, I promise. Um, what we offer, we offer confidentiality. I think that's huge because you don't want what you tell me to go tell, be to talk to somebody else about. We offer empathy. I understand how you're feeling. Not, oh, I felt that way. I've done that. No, you, you walk beside them. You're not walking in front of them, leading them. You're walking beside them. We offer support and we offer referrals, like I said, to our CBLs and different. So how can you help your, support, your coworkers when they re for reentry for large incidents? So acknowledge the event. Acting like it didn't happen hurts and makes it awkward. So talk about that elephant in the room. But if they don't want to talk, don't. Let them be that. But, you know, I'm here if you want to talk about it, whatever that looks like. Don't ask questions, just listen. Don't ask. I, I mean, of course, if it's an ongoing investigation, you're not going to be like, so did you shoot him or not? You know, we've done this. <laughs> hey, did you did you really not do CPR on that guy? I don't need to know that. That's not helping you. 
Um, they may repeat the details over and over, but they don't, if they don't want to talk, don't push. Offer long-term support. What does that look like? Hey, I'm going to go get a monster from the gas station. Or, hey, here's my debit card. Will you go grab us a monster? Because you, they may need some fresh air. Or, hey, I'm going to make some. You know they love your chicken enchiladas. Hey, I'm going to make some chicken enchiladas tonight. You good for lunch tomorrow? What can you do to support them? What can you do to support their spouse? That's something that we're getting into now in our peer support group is um, a spouse group. So that if officer-involved incidents occur, we can reach out to the spouse as well, because that's something that we knew we were lacking. We also have that, we're looking at that for our children. <laughs> Remember that it, you don't get to determine how long it takes someone to feel better. They get to determine that. So just because you were fine when you hung up the call, that first anniversary may be the worst. The second, the next time they have a call like that, offer practical help. I am world worse about saying, hey, call me if you need anything, instead of just doing something that I know will help them. Because I'm not, I should know I'm not going to be the one to reach out. Because, so why would I expect my other type A personalities to reach out? Like I said, do specific things. Hey, you want to go listen to some music after work? Music is my thing. I love music. Um, Pick up a drink for them. How nice is it when someone remembers what flavor monster you drink? Or somebody says, you really like these cookies, hint, hint. So I bring them to every conference because I know you loved them. I have somebody in here that does that, and I love it. She's my, she's, she walks in with her little cookie basket, and I'm like, ha, ha, hand those here. Um, and I'm not a chocolate person, but I love her cookies. Um, so how, how nice is that, that you remember that? You remember... I always try to associate somebody with something in my centers because I do have three centers and two dispatch centers. So I have three PSAPs and two dispatch centers. I try to associate them so I can be like, hey, how's your dog? Or, hey, I'm reading this book right now on my Kindle. You should so read it. Do you like to read about smut? <laughs> because that may be what we like to read about. Um, whatever that looks like, hey, I'm this far into this movie and I thought about you, you would really like it. I've had officers walk up behind me. My, my iPad is not little by any means. And one of them looked at me and he said, what are you reading? I said, don't be nosy. <laughs> uh, watch for signs of abnormal reactions. Again, you're used to seeing her like this, which is fine, but they walk in like this. What's an abnormal reaction? If this is her every day, it's not abnormal for her to be this person or him to be this person. But what does that look like? Is there irrational anger, crying spells, periods of relapse? So that's my contact information. I have business cards up here. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. That is my personal number. I absolutely, 100%, if it's already in your phone, you know I answer it no matter what. I will answer you no matter what. I will be your person. Don't think that you're alone. <coughs> but wait. So Inside Out 2 is coming this month, like tomorrow. tomorrow. Actually, tonight, if you're in the right place. If I was at home, I'd be watching it tonight. But so those bring new emotions to Riley is who the main character is. They bring envy in you, which is boredom. I had to look that one up. Anxiety. She's my new emotion that sits on my desk. She, she, she's my favorite. She's right now my favorite. And then we have embarrassment because with any peer support, all, you're going to feel, you could feel all these emotions. With any day, you're going to feel all these emotions. Man, that peer support person paid more attention to her story than she did mine. Why'd she do that? This is so dumb. I'm so bored. Anxiety. Why am I doing this? Where am I at? Blah, blah, blah. And then embarrassment. Embarrassment sits there and weighs on you. And then your imagination comes in and all of these things get worse. So like I said, to be continued, because we still have those four emotions that we're going to talk about. I'm not waiting for the new movie to come out, but I'm waiting for the new movie to come out. <laughs> but that is where we're at. So if anybody, like I said, there's stickers up here of all of our emotions. 
come get your stickers because I'm a sticker aholic. Um, so come get you some stickers. And if you have any, my business cards are here. If you have any questions, I'm in the back of the room. Uh, just Moapco and all those plugs. I am the Moapco secretary, as you saw today. I'm a Monina, no, I'm a Monita member. I'm the treasurer for the Missouri 911 Servant, no, 911 <laughs> Directors <laughs> Association. And I also assist with registration at conference. So we want to see you. We want you there. I will be the one dancing, acting a fool. I like to have fun. That's what I like to do. So don't be afraid to reach out. I'm here. Thank you, guys.